Hey, what's going on? Josh Dawson, Realtor with Core Ohio Realty Advisors and President of the Greater Dublin Realty Association. I hope you're having a great day. Um, just winding down a Friday here at, at my house, uh, here the the office, I guess you would say. Um, but uh, hey, I'm getting a lot of questions about what the market is going to be like in the coming year, the next six months, the next 12 months. Can home prices really maintain this level of 10.5% appreciation, um, will mortgage rates, uh, you know, are they going to go up, go down, when may that happen? So I wanted to just put together a little uh, presentation for you and just kind of go over this. So what I will do here, just share my screen um, and play, here we go. All right, so as you can see, there is uh, a lot of development going around central Ohio. Um, here is the Dublin Link uh, Bridge that connects uh, historic old Dublin uh, to Bridge Park, which is one of the most attractive developments in central Ohio. Um, what happened in central Ohio, the real estate world in 2020? Um, there were 33,431 homes sold. That is a record. Um, there, the average, the median uh, sales price, a little typo there. Uh, median sales price was two hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars. That was a ten and a half percent increase compared to twenty nineteen. Um, sellers received ninety nine point eight percent of list price. So the odds of somebody getting a deal in this market are slim to none, um, especially if you're near that. Uh, average median sales price and below and even even a little bit higher than that. Um, and right now there are 0.7 months of inventory. And what does that mean? So um, for the number of buyers that are out in the market, if there were no new homes listed for sale, the current number of homes for sale would only meet about 0.7 months of the buyer demand out there. They say a balanced market has between four and six months worth of inventory. So as you can see, it is really a seller's market. And that's, you know, we have a crisis of inventory for homes for sale. Um, so also, listings, the number of new listings that hit the MLS, the multiple listing service, which is the market um, here in, in Columbus, the, the market software that we use uh, um, to sell real estate on the public market here in central Ohio. Um, listings were down 3.4%, which is a 10 year trend in central Ohio, maybe minus a couple years. Over the last 10 years, listings, there have been fewer and fewer homes for sale. Um, and that is causing that's a big driver for why you see that 10 and a half percent appreciation rate over a year. Now I live here in Dublin. So I just wanted to take a, a quick minute to talk about Dublin. So the, the area I'm talking about are the, is the area in which uh, the cover the Dublin city schools covers. So in 20, 20, there were 1,362 homes sold. Um, and that's a, a, an increase of about 2%. Um, there were 370, thousand dollars that was the median sales price in uh dublin city school districts um that's also up ten and a half percent versus 2019 and sellers received 98.7 percent of the list price so still uh there's you know little room to negotiate especially once you're around that median sales price number um there were 1,465 new listings in Dublin um, in 2020, and that's down about 3.4% to what it was in 2019. And again, there are also 0.7 months of inventory uh, as of December of 2020, uh, the most recent data that we have. And that's uh, that's very, very low. Um, so that tells you that Dublin, Ohio is, is more than in a seller's market right now. Now, now we're going to talk more more nationally, right? And 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 also work that conversation down locally. So, according to Showing Time, um, you know, Showing Time, you know, the the positive takeaways from 2020, and Showing Time is the service that um, uh, listing agents and buyers use to coordinate showings for listings. Right? We have an app on our phone. We can log into a website and just coordinate um, when when homes can be seen. Um, how to schedule those, access instructions and whatnot. So um, quote from Showing Time, market data has always been a powerful tool for real estate, but 2020 market marked a new high point for how data was leveraged to encourage informed decisions and to help real estate professionals reinforce their status as market experts. So one thing that I did at the beginning of this pandemic was really start to dive into um, the data out there, 
what it was telling us, what it wasn't telling us. And I was trying to clarify and not terrify <laughs> the folks who, who I speak with on a day-to-day -day basis, because regardless of whether you're left, right, middle, whatever, right? If you turned on a news station, you know, they sell commercials and they sell newspapers when they terrify, right? So um, I wanted to just clarify uh, instead of terrify with the, the, re the information that I was sharing with my folks. So this slide here that I wanted to talk to you about, um, so annual home price appreciation. And this is the slide that I use, these four slides I used at the beginning of the pandemic to show people that just because we're in a recession or looking like we will be in a recession, um, doesn't necessarily mean that there's gonna be a real estate crash or home prices are gonna drop in value. Um, as you can see in the top left, um, for the, six years leading up to the uh, the financial collapse of 2006, 2008, we had, you know, pretty high levels of annual home price appreciation, 8.6, 6.5, 8.5, 8.7, 12.5, 11.4. That was telling us that something was really, really off, right? Now, leading up to the recession of uh, 2020, we had 4.4, 5.2, 5.5, 6.4, 4.8, 4.7, more modest home price appreciation leading up to um, the, uh, the pandemic, right? Also, at the height of the um, the Great Recession, 2006, 2008, you're, you're seeing that it was actually a buyer's market. There were a lot more homes uh, for buyers to choose from um, than there are today. And that's to the tune of, you know, at some points in the market, there was 10, 11, 12 months worth of inventory. And that is really, really, uh, you know, uh, tip to the buyer side. Um, whereas right now we have nationally, it's about around three, three months worth of inventory for sale here in central Ohio. I told you it's less than one month. So we had a crisis of inventory, uh, leading into the pandemic, right? Another slide they like to talk about is that, um, there were, a, there were a lot, there were a lot less homeowners, um, who not a lot less, but there was less home equity being cashed out leading up to uh, the pandemic compared to leading up to the Great Recession. So for the three years leading up to the Great Recession, there was a total of $824 billion in home equity that people were pulling out of their house, right? Cashing it out, doing whatever, buying boats, buying condos, buying whatever, right? Um, Versus for the three years leading up, so 2017, 2018, 2019, those three years leading up into the pandemic, there was about 247 billion uh, being pulled out. So, you know, about one quarter or so uh, uh, of what was being done leading up to the Great Recession. So, um, and lastly, and here's a, this is a big bid re reason. And, you know, if there was ever any star in the market in 2020, it, I would say it was equity, right? So this bottom right slide that I showed early in the pandemic, um, of all homes in America that have a mortgage, um, those homes have at least all, uh, sorry, of all homes in America, at least 60% of them have equity in them, right? And then 42.1% of all homes in America are owned free and clear. So what does that mean? Worst case scenario, somebody did lose their job or something you know, it's just COVID is affecting their, their, their household finances in a, in a very negative way. They still have a lot of equity in their house, which is going to give them options. They could sell the house and still get money after the sale. Whereas leading up to the great recession, that was not the case. Many, many, many homes were underwater, which caused for the short sales that we saw in the market and the, uh, the bank owned, uh, the REO properties, the bank owned properties, you know, um, so we didn't see that. We won't see that now. So for folks out there talking about the foreclosures coming, and I'll have a little bit more on that later, um, it, ask them to show their work, right? Like we're back in school. Um, show us that that is coming on the horizons because there's nothing that I've seen out there that has, has told me that. And if you do, if you see it, send it my way, because I'd love to incorporate it into, into things like this that I do every day. So Another thing that we talked about is, does a recession equal a drop in housing prices? Now, over the last, leading up to the pandemic, you know, if you took the last five recessions that we had, right, 
1980, up until 2008. Out of those five, only two uh, were, were really, uh, is where we saw home price depreciation. So home values went down. And you could say 2008, the housing industry actually caused the financial collapse. So um, now if you incorporate it into the, the pandemic that we've seen, now you're only talking about two out of the last six recessions where we've seen home price uh, depreciation. So for folks out there, when the economy uh, goes into a recession, the data shows right now that it doesn't necessarily mean that we are going to see any sort of drop in housing prices. Um, so more about the growth of home equity. And this is uh, from Frank, uh, Frank Noffitt. Uh, he is the chief economist at CoreLogic. Over the past year, strong home price growth has created a level of home equity, oops, sorry, a level of home equity of homeowners. The average family with a home mortgage had about $194,000 in their home equity in the third quarter of 2020. This provides an important buffer to protect families if they experience financial difficulties and is one reason for the generation low in foreclosures rates right now. Now let's look a little bit about the home equity. So real quickly, four, col or four, um, four sections here. The average gain in equity in mortgages in 2020 was about $17,000 per, per mortgage. Um, and the current average equity of homes with mortgage is about 194,000. And 38.2% of all homes are owned free and clear. They don't even have a mortgage, right? And so, um, Overall, we saw a 10.8% increase in equity in the United States in 2020 um, in, in the U.S. real estate, uh, residential real estate, and that equals about over a trillion dollars in total equity. Um, now, as you can see here in Ohio, the average household uh, in 2020 saw about 13 grand worth of home equity year over year gains. Um, I would assume it's probably about about the same in central Ohio, um, maybe a little bit more. I just don't have that low level data for our area on that one. Um, another quote, Frank Martell, president and CEO of CoreLogic, which is a real estate data um, aggregator. The housing market has remained a strong pillar in an otherwise tumultuous economic year. A sharp rise in demand spurred by record low interest rates continues to bolster home equity, homeowner equity. And with many people now spending more time than ever before at home, some homeowners have tapped into their strength and equity to fund renovations. If you live in a neighborhood like me, uh, nothing could be more true than, than what was just said there. Um, so let's say you were to buy a $300,000 home in 2021, right? Let's say that you bought it and closed January 1st. Based on projections, um, you know, potential growth in household wealth over, over the five, next five years, uh, hypothetically, that person is going to gain about $54,221 in home equity um, over that, that period of time. Um, and this is based on price appreciation projected by the home price expectation survey that was conducted in the fourth quarter of 2020. So as you can see, they're projecting that a $300,000 house at the end of 2021 is probably going to be uh, valued at about $313,000. So if you are thinking about staying on the sidelines because you just don't want to get in a bidding war, like nobody likes a bidding war. Trust me, I don't like working with clients in a bidding war, but we do get through them. Um, and I have some tips and tricks to kind of get their uh, offer and their presentation to really stand out amongst others. However, um, you know, you should really think about the loss in equity that you, you may have, right? At, the more that you are on the sidelines. Now, what's ahead in 2021? Obviously, if this were to say what's ahead in 2020, and I was doing this, you know, in January of 2020 versus doing it in December 2020, it would be much different, right? So, we go by the best information we have. Nobody can project a global pandemic, uh, but uh, so what is ahead in 2020? So based on David Maley, who's the president at homes.com, he had a quote, the surge in the work from home population has rewritten the playbook for as many, for many home buying and rental decisions. 
from when and where to relocate to what people are looking for in their next residence. I know that we have turned our uh, lower level here in our, our home into two workstations for my wife, who's a speech uh, pathologist here in central Ohio. And for me, obviously as a real estate agent, um, and, uh, it's, it's worked well. I, I love my coworker. Um, <laughs> and it's been, it's been fun. Um, uh, but our total housing, um, uh, you know, layout and, and everything we thought about in our home before the pandemic and now is, is totally different. So, um, every family is going through this right now. And a Mark Fleming, chief economist at First American Title, um, despite the best intentions of home builders to provide more housing supply, the big short in housing supply will continue into 2021 and likely keep out house price appreciation flying high. Um, nowhere is this more true than Central Ohio right now? Uh, according to the building industry folks here in Central Ohio, uh, I forgot what the exact number was, but we basically need about 10 to 11,000 new homes uh, constructed every year in Central Ohio. We are producing about five to 6,000. And that is gonna be a problem for a while because it's not like builders can just flip on a switch and have more homes ready tomorrow, right? It takes six to eight to nine to 10 to 12 months uh, for that product to go from conception to being finished depending on the municipality in which it's located. So um, for supply, it, for an injection of supply, uh, I would not expect that anytime soon. Um, at least maybe we can revisit the, the discussion in the summer. But I can tell you, uh, I'd love to get the date on this, um, I'll, I'll, maybe for our next our next chat. But um, new homes are not even close to the median sales price we talked about in Central Ohio. They're much more expensive. Um, they're in the top third of the price point uh, for each uh, locality uh, for the most part. Um, so if you are considering buying new and you want to stay in the area um, or buy new in an area that you you'd like to consider buying in um the price is got likely going to be much higher than you anticipate um so um i am working i'm you know just recently closed a new construction deal i have one closing soon and i'm working with another couple right now relocating from wisconsin it's likely they're going to go new construction too so uh we've speak spoken to a lot of builders in central ohio and compared a lot of different products and options and neighborhoods so if you do have questions about new construction um i have got a little head start on the research so i'd be happy to kind of guide you through that so just let me know um now according to some national association of Realtors and some other realtor.com, Freddie Mac, uh, Mortgage Bankers Association. As far as home price forecast goes uh, in 2021, I, you know, and I, I would agree with this too. Um, you know, we're looking at anywhere from two to six percent is what they're projecting. So if you kind of take uh, take the median there, you're probably looking at about four, around four percent or so. Um, and I think that's going to take into account for the six, first six to eight months of the year. Um, I think we're going to see lower interest rates uh, because the pandemic um, hopefully uh, is going to be taken care of, you know, or kind of under control uh, by the summer and springtime. Um, and the number one factor in all that is inoculations. How many vaccines can we get in people's bodies in the United States? And that's really what's going to drive this market more than anything. So um, if you want to you know, help your housing industry, if you want to help your local business owner and your local economy, the best thing you can do is as soon as you are eligible to receive a vaccine um, and you've talked to your doctor and make sure that it's the right thing for you, um, get the vaccine because you are not just helping yourself, uh, um, you know, prevent yourself from, from getting uh, COVID. You're helping tame the transmission of it. And, uh, you're helping your local economy, you're helping your local business owner get back to work. Um, so uh, really important that we do that. Um, next, uh, realtor.com. The bright spot for buyers is that more homes are likely to become available in the last six months of 2020. Um, that should give folks more options to choose from and take away some of their urgency. Um, with a larger selection, buyers may not be forced to make a decision in mere hours and will have more time to make up their minds. Um, that's because I would assume um, that they're making the assumptions that um, one, the pandemic's gonna be more under control, therefore uh, interest rates might rise a little bit. Um, still will be near record lows, but you know, at a 2.75 interest rate now might jump up to three and a half percent or so, or 4%. So um, that's still relatively low. Um, if you look at the history of mortgage rates, um, 
that on top of more supply, new, new construction coming on the market. I think that's what you're going to see. Like, you know, you're going to go from being in 70 miles per hour in a car, uh, to slowing down to 55, you're still going 55. Um, and that 55 is going to come, you know, six, eight months from now, that's when we're going to, maybe the housing, the, the appreciation is going to slow down a little bit because we're going to have more supply, maybe interest rates kicking up. Uh, but it's still going to be a very positive, uh, you know, mark for the real estate industry. So the economy, no, nothing is more important than getting inoculated, right? So if we want to get uh, Benjamin Franklin here, if we don't want him to have to wear his mask into his local uh, Philadelphia pub, uh, then the best thing you can do is get a shot as soon as possible. So um, here is a chart about um, here, the unemployment rate, you know, how many years is it going to take for the unemployment rate to return to pre-crisis levels, right? This yellow, the yellow V is what actually happened. Uh, it was predicted uh, early on, um, you know, some of the, the folks I shared earlier said, we're going to get a V-shaped recovery. Now where that yellow line ends on the screen is kind of where we are now. Um, and the blue line is where the uh, survey of economists um, from the Wall Street Journal um, think it's going. And then the green is what the Federal Reserve thinks is going to happen. Um, so it's going to take a it's going to take a while uh, to get all the jobs back, but compared to the la the Great Recession of 2006 to 2008 or so, um, it took a long while. I mean, it took nine over nine years for the for things to get back to normal as far as unemployment rates go. Um, it looks like we're going to be bouncing back a lot quicker than that. Uh, you know, it's going to take us two to three years maybe instead of that nine year period to get get everything back. Um, now, unemployment rate projections here, uh, we're currently at 6.7%. And as you can see um, from, you know, the Wall Street Journal Economist Survey and the Fed projections, you know, we're going to drop each year for the next three years or so. Um, and one group that I want to uh, just talk about briefly is uh, the renters out there, right? Right now, renters are disproportionately hurt by the crisis. Um, a greater share of renters, they lost their jobs in the pandemic. Uh, that means they lost savings that could have been used for a down payment and uh, you know could have fallen behind on their bills, which hurt their credit and then made it even more difficult for them to be future homeowners. So um, I was laid off during the great recession. I just you know, was within two years out of college. Um, so um, for folks who have lost their job in the pandemic, I know what it feels like and it just, it stinks. So I, I do think about those folks and um, you know, those are the folks that have been hurt most in this pandemic. Uh, but um, if they stay positive, let's let's hope that um, there will be opportunities for them quickly uh, establishing here in Central Ohio, uh, so that everybody can get back to their pre-pandemic kind of uh, grooves and and jobs. Um, now, one thing that uh, I've heard people talk about is there's you know homeowners are able to, to uh, file for forbearance, uh, meaning they don't have to pay their mortgage payment. I think it's for like 365 days or so. Um, well, once that stops, what's going to happen, right? So out of the 2.7 million homeowners who, who, who are in forbearance right now, um, you know, there was a survey done by a home price expectation survey done in the fourth quarter of 2020. And they basically split them into three groups. So 58% um, of the respondents uh, thought that they would, those folks in forbearance would resume their mortgage payments and stay in their home for at least a year. 24% list their home within one year of exiting forbearance. Um, and then 18% of, of all the 2.7 million homeowners, so that makes up for about 486,000 uh, homeowners, um, they plan to receive, a, you know, they were anticipated to receive a foreclosure notice within a year of exiting forbearance. So that 486,000 homes, those are, those are 486,000 families. I don't mean to, to take it lightly and whatnot, but relatively speaking, it's still a lot lower than what we normally see uh, for um, foreclosures in a given year. Um, Treasury rates uh, have really been moving up since the election, but mortgage rates have kept down. And uh, Michael Fratatoni, the chief economist at the Mortgage Bankers Association, um, thinks we're going to start see, seeing mortgage rates drift up as the treasury rate does. And 
as opposed to moving in the opposite direction, which tends to happen uh, when you compare the 10-year treasury note, or they call it the T-bill, um, and, and mortgage rates. Um, now, let's... Um, Let's talk about the difference in the life of a loan over 30 years. Um, now, let's assume that mortgage rates are going to tick up, and we assume that um, you know the mortgage that you might take out uh, of $300,000 right now at an interest rate of 2.7%. Um, you know, you're looking at sorry uh, about 12. 1,200, 10 bucks uh, in a mortgage interest uh, payment in interest. Uh, now, by the end of the uh, end of the year, uh, that same mortgage is going to be $317,000 more than likely. Um, so a difference of about $17,000 um, if interest rates tick up 3.4%, nothing else changed. So you're talking in a difference of a monthly payment of $189. Now, people say, oh, it's less than $200, not the end of the world. However, over a 30 year period uh, for the life of that loan, um, you're looking at $68,115 uh, in difference, just, just by mortgage rates being different. So um, what, what this tells me is that waiting, just waiting to buy a home, if you, if you plan on establishing roots, if you have roots established here and you plan to stay you know, three to five years or so, and you think you're in a stable job uh, situation, stable, I guess, what's stable right now in the pandemic. But, you know, if you're confident, if you haven't lost your job yet and you're not, and you're confident you're going to continue working, um, you know, in the industry you're in right now for the foreseeable future, I think now is a really good time to say, yeah, it's time to do this. Let's, let's buy a place. Um, now, um, so $68,000 is what you'd be saving over 30 years. So just to sum up this, um, this is uh, Jessica Louts. She's a VP of Demographics and Behavior Insights at the National Association of Realtors. I just want to share a quote with her. She believes that the American dream of home, home ownership is very strong, it is very much alive for all of the survey data that she's seen. If you're not a homeowner, you want to be one in the future, whether it's a short term or a long term goal. So I just wanted to, to share that information with you um, because, you know, there's a lot of a lot of data out there, um, a lot of people chirping and talking about what they think is going to happen in the market. Um, I wanted to ho I hope this data helped clarify what's going on um, and not terrify you. Um, and every situation is different. Real estate is such a micro, um, a micro thing. Um, and one person's household versus the next is not the same. So real estate decisions are, should be made on a uh, person to person, family to family uh, basis. And so whether the, you're looking to sell a home in this market, you're looking to buy your home, if you're looking to do both and you want to know how to best get started doing so, or if you plan to stay in your home for a few more years and you just need some help figuring out what are the things that I could be doing right now uh, to best to put myself in the best position um, to sell in, in the next few years, please let me know. Those are the types of conversations that I'm having every day with consumers here in central Ohio. Um, and again, Josh Dawson, realtor with Core Ohio Realty Advisors. I look forward to seeing you around and have a happy and safe, uh, safe end of January.